All right, today I'm gonna do this Euroia Lipolytica transformation protocol. So this is a high efficiency transformation protocol that uh, we as a lab have been optimizing recently. Um, so hopefully I can provide some important insights into how to get the highest efficiency with these Euroia transformations. This one is scaled down um, for three transformations. Um, and this protocol is really simple. I'll link the paper that it's sourced from uh, in the description below. But basically we make this transformation buffer with PEG 4000, lithium acetate, and DTT, dithiotriatol. And we collect some cells that we grew overnight, resuspend in the transformation buffer, add SSDNA, add the plasmid that we want, and then heat shock the cells at 39 Celsius for one hour. Uh, wash the cells and then put them in the selective condition that should maintain the plasmid. So here's our plasmid here that we want to transform. It has a Euro 3 selective marker on it, so we'll end up plating in SD minus U media, so synthetic media without uracil. And then these are the strains that we're going to be transforming that plasmid into. Uh, our shorthand is Z4, Z8, and Z12. Um, normally when we grow these overnight cultures, we use two milliliters, um, but these cultures have already been used uh, by a lab mate today, but we have enough for our transformations. And then I have my lithium acetate right here that doesn't need to be made fresh, so I just have a big stock of it. Um, the DTT should be made fresh. The PEG, I don't think it needs to be made fresh, but we're gonna do that today. So we want to make a 53% solution of PEG 4000. So I'll use 454 milligrams and then go to a final volume of 857 microliters. So this isn't going to end up being perfect, but it will be uh, close enough. So you'll see. I'll bring this book with me. All right, so here we've got the PEG 4000. In the lab, we also have uh, diff different molecular weights of polyethylene glycol, um, but basically it's a polymer, so it's got poly in the name, with monomers of ethylene glycol. And so the average molecular weight in the 4000 is 4000 uh, Daltons, or 4000 uh, grams per mole. Yeah, right? I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but basically it's just a different different sizes of PEG, and we found that this size of PEG works best for our applications. Close enough. And we will take that back to our bench. And try to dissolve it in a total volume of 857 microliters. So this is a pretty highly concentrated amount of PEG, so it's kind of a pain to dissolve, so we might need to heat it up a little bit or something. Nice. So I'll start with like 500 microliters and see how that goes. We'll just use sterile water. We don't need to use millicue water. And all my sterile water is gone. So we'll use millicue water. See, it's a pain to dissolve. So we'll throw it in a heat block. And I think that's pretty close to 857. <laughs> it's about as close as we're gonna get. So 48, sure, we'll get that melted. So we need DTT, dithio 3 at all. Somehow, I'm gonna weigh out 15 and a half milligrams. really tiny one. 
the cutest scooper we have. twice as much as we need. Mmm. Not bad. Alright, so we will take this all back to the bench. and a half milligrams so 15 and a half milli or uh, the DTT you should keep in a in at least minus four degrees Celsius And we need this dissolved in 50 microliters. So, okay, missing pipettes. There we go. 50 microliters of water. our DTT. Um, I'm also going to get the SSDNA out. So we have two brands of SSDNA that we use and I believe they're both 10 milligrams per milliliter. Yep. Sonicated salmon sperm DNA. 10 milligrams per milliliter. This one is made by Agilent. We also use, oh, use one made by Thermo. I've pre aliquoted these samples out so uh, they've only been thawed once if you need the highest efficiency what you'll want to do is use a brand new tube of the ssdna when you do your transformation um, but we found even with ssdna that's been thawed uh, once or twice we can get you know like 10 20 thousand transformants from a single 250 microliter reaction, which is pretty good. Okay, that's mostly, mostly dissolved when we add the rest of the components it should dissolve all the way. This DTT has thawed as well. Um, so first what I want to do is collect our cells. Uh, with the cells you want them to be in stationary phase. You don't want to use exponential phase cells. Uh, there's a lot of other transformation protocols um, for other organisms that specify early exponential phase cells. I think especially with Saccharomyces, that's common. Um, but for whatever reason with Uroia, stationary phase cells work, wet, work the best. And even like late stationary phase cells can be better than early stationary phase, uh, which is interesting. So these cultures have grown at 30 degrees Celsius for about 24 hours, 20 to 24 hours in YPD media. Uh, and we don't need to be super sterile with these because we're done with those cultures. All right, so we got Z4, Z8, and Z12. You'll notice that I cheated a little bit. I used 500 microliters of cells. Uh, I just really want this transformation to work. This is one of those transformations that we just need one colony. 
Um, but it's also a transformation that we've had a lot of issues with. So I just want to be certain that we get at least one colony. And I'll show you other ways to guarantee that um, later in the protocol. So we'll let that spin. And while that spins, we'll make our transformation solution. Transformation buffer. So we want 50 microliters of our two molar DTT into our peg. That's a pain to pipette. This DTT is done. And then we also need 100 microliters of our lithium acetate, one molar lithium acetate. into our peg. And since we add those solutions, this should mix easier. Um, I've done some tests to see if you can store this transformation buffer in the fridge. And I think it does, it works fine. The efficiency is lower, um, but it works fine. I've also made sort of Euroia competent cells where you make this transformation buffer resuspend your cells um, in the transformation buffer, add the SSDNA, and then uh, just throw them in the minus 80 freezer, and they seem to do fine. A again, lower efficiency, but it still works. All right, so we'll get our pipettes ready. So we want eight microliters of our SSDNA 300 microliters of our transformation buffer. And we'll want to make sure that the heat block is ready for us too. So we want this at 39. We'll give it a little extra. And I'm adding some water just to assist in the heat transfer because the heat transfer to the cells is really important. Okay, so we got a nice pellet of cells. Hopefully you can see that well. Let's take all these. Oops, dump out the supernatant. So 2000 G for four minutes is a good speed to not damage the cells. So we need 300 microliters of the PEG solution. So we only need 750 microliters for these three transformations, but we made almost a mil we have some left. It's better to have some left than to not have some left. So now I'm going to mix this. You can mix with vortexing, but I just have a few samples, so I'm just going to mix with a pipette. That looks good. Petting it is a pain. I'm gonna switch to vortexing. So let's add the SSDNA first. Yoink! Don't mind me.
All right, so we're gonna vortex between all of these steps. So there's eight, there's eight microliters, eight, not 800, eight microliters of the SSDNA. And we're gonna vortex. All right, and then our plasmid is at a concentration of 247 nanograms per microliter, so I'll use three microliters of the plasmid. That's a little bit more than 600 nanograms, but it's fine. All right, that's it. So we'll put this at 39 Celsius for one hour and then come back and put them in selective media. Here are our samples, they haven't really changed. Uh, so sort of the best way to clean these up is to add one milliliter of water and then centrifuge these down. So let's add the water. Yoink. Oh my god. Wrong pipette. This is a waste of millicue water, but I need to make some more sterile water. Okay, that was a little bit weird. The video stopped recording part of the way through that, but basically I resuspended the cells in the water, pelleted them, uh, resuspended in the SD minus U media and inoculated into these culture tubes. Um, so this is what the culture tubes look like. So after two days of growth, I'll plate them on SD minus U agar plates and we should get colonies. So hopefully I can show you that. Right. Here's what they look like after two days. They've grown a lot, so I'm gonna streak them out on petri dishes. All right, this is what the uh, plates look like when they're streaked out. You can see we got colonies on all of them. Nice, so this is selective media plates and we got single colonies, so these should have our plasmid.